What's happening guys, Wave618 here. It is the 24th of March and we're due an update on Bitcoin. Now, I did break things down in my last video. I told you the three counts that I was looking at, how I was gonna eliminate various counts. And if you've been following what I've mentioned in that last video, you'll understand that I'm now looking at this count, which is this big WXY wave count, whereby we're gonna see a big sell-off in Bitcoin pretty soon. That is the forecast that I'm looking at. I'm struggling to see it playing out any other way. I'll explain my reasoning for that in this video. We'll talk about potential targets. I do think we may see a low uh, this year and we'll be talking about the levels that I'll be closely monitoring in order to short this, this move. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of money to be made. It looks like with a very good uh, shorting opportunities. So those are the things we're going to discuss in today's video. So if interested, stay tuned. Hey guys, all right. So first things first, We've obviously got our outbreak of coronavirus affecting a large portion of the globe. So first thing I want to say is obviously I hope that you're all taking care of yourselves and I hope that you're following the instruction of your governments, which in the case of the UK where I am, it's a case of self-isolation at present. And um, yeah, because it's not just about protecting ourselves, but our vulnerable members of society and the least we can do is stay at home during these difficult times so yeah just wanted to put that out there to begin with but yeah hopefully you and your families are all doing well during this difficult period all right now obviously we're due an update in bitcoin it's been two weeks since my last video so a lot to talk about not a lot to talk about because i touched about touched on it in my last video about this wave count uh just before going into it uh, a lot of people have been asking me when am i going to do my next uh, discount on cryptology there are people who haven't experienced cryptology before and obviously every so often I do a discount for the first month just so people can sample it so I think I will do a discount at this point it has been a, a, a long time since the last one uh, so we're going to do a 50% discount on the first month so that's for cryptology which is where I cover the top 15 market cap cryptocurrencies each week and um, yeah basically we'll just take a look at that website so this is it uh so wave618.com basically and then yeah this is the main page to find cryptology you just click here and you'll find all the information about it so i've gone into detail explaining what is involved in the, the pack in the package so you get your regular crypto updates you get access to the discord community and you also get access to my full educational course though do note that in this subscription service, you only have access while subscribed and the modules are released gradually over a three month period. All right. So if interested, then do check that out. All right. Over to Bitcoin. And um, yeah, so basically this is the count that I'm now looking at. So this major three wave down, which are W. I've been saying all along that this is corrective. I've taken a lot of stick for this because uh, obviously the speed of the move did look very impulsive and I've had a lot of difficulty convincing people that it was corrective. I think slowly people are starting to believe me now or have more faith in that that count. I've been mentioning that it was an A B wave triangle C where the C is hyper extended. It's a 4.236 extension of wave A and uh, it followed a very, very nice uh, pitchfork um, when you use that wave count. And it was a lot more obvious on a lot of the altcoins. So that's why it's very hard to see it as corrective unless you use correlating markets, which is one of the beauties of following the top 15 market caps. It allows you to look at uh, crypto as a whole. Now, so that this is the way I'm looking at it. So this W X wave, as I say, is corrective. And then we're looking for this Y wave, which in itself will be corrective. And so far we've got a three wave move down. Okay. So I, I believe this is our first three waves. We may now see a bit of an X wave and then we're going to roll over soon. I 
I can't see us coming much higher. As you can see right now, we're seeing a little bit of a bounce. And if we, when we zoom in on the short time frames, we'll see that this bounce is actually looking rather corrective in nature. It's not looking particularly impulsive. And right now we're eating into this overhead resistance. Literally, you would want to plot a line around there where price was really held. You get a few wicks below and that's basically what we're testing right now. Yeah, just eating into that overhead resistance. So it's struggling a little bit there. I do think it has the potential to push a little bit higher, but um, yeah, could roll over any moment, all right? So the way I'm looking at it is, let's talk about the, the macroscopic count to begin with. So I'm looking for this, as I say, to come down much lower. So how far am I expecting it to come down? Well, one of the big indicators that I use are Camarilla pivots. So let's just pull those up a moment. So if we go on the weekly time frame, weekly time frame, let's pull on the Camarilla pivots. And what I'm going to do, let's take off everything else. Let's just look at Camarilla. And one day, I'm pretty sure you'll all be using these. But in the meantime, you probably just want to see a bit more evidence of it, of these levels actually having, showing some significance. Um, so basically, yeah, the S4 is where we drop down to with this big drop down to 3.2K. We bounced from there. Uh, basically, when you're on the weekly time frame, the range for these Camarilla pivots is one year. So for this year here, we came up to our R4, really struggled to get a closing weekly candle above the R4. We then come down, test the R3, and then we show weakness. Basically, we find ourselves beneath the R3 at the close of this year. And then as a result, Within the next year, the next time we hit major resistance at the R3, we really fly down. All right. And I was mentioning to my group, this R3 level around 10K is where I, I don't think price is going to get, price is basically going to see that as a major obstacle. And I did say if it gets above that, there's a very good chance it takes out the R4. And then once it takes out that, it takes out that high and it can potentially push on to 16K. However, it's not what happened. We've had a big sell-off. I mentioned around 7.7K. If we lost that level, then I'd be very, very bearish. I mentioned as long as we we're under the 50-week simple moving average, I'd be, I would not be going long. And um, yeah, I'm very glad that I made that decision not to go long. So <clears throat> now, obviously, where have we come down to? The S3, that is where we've seen a bounce, okay? We've seen a bit of a bounce. And I think I'm forecasting potentially as coming down to the S4. And I think it could happen this year. I'm thinking around October, tying it in with the US election uh, in November. And um, yeah, that's the way I'm looking at it playing out. So could be another dramatic sell off pretty soon is what I'm looking out for. Um, so yeah, these Camarilla pivots are very, very useful. Check it out. Even on the 15 minute time frame, you'll see these levels getting respected time and time again. You can see right now we're struggling to get a close above the R3, showing a little bit of weakness, uh, but it's only really coming down in what looks like corrective fashion. So it may just push up a little bit higher. Um, all right, but before we go on the shorter time frames, let's just bring our annotations back. Let's go back. Let's take off the Camarilla pivots. So as I say, target here is at the weekly S4, put the little label there, and uh, that's around 1300. If we zoom out, you can see it's very close to this high at 1150, and also eats into this little bit of uh, price action here where we get a bit of an order block on the weekly time frame. So um, yeah, it looks like a reasonable target. If we do a fib extension, so let's do a fib extension of W and extend it from the end of X. So we get a very nice 1.236 extension at that level. So a very nice Fibonacci relationship between waves W and Y. Um, yeah, so it looks pretty reasonable for a target in my opinion. Uh, obviously it means a very big sell off. We're currently sat at around, uh, well we're sat at 6.6K right now. So coming down to 1.3K is a huge drop. Um, <clears throat> now, big question is how is it traded? Okay, so we've got to look at where we're going to find resistance. As I said, we are looking to be eating into overhead resistance right here. Okay, and um, I mentioned in my last video, these 
significant order blocks let's just pull them on so these are monthly order blocks if you want the month let's just show you any anyone who's new to my channel you probably want to know what i'm talking about here so these blocks were basically drawn let's let's even hide this pitchfork for a moment so these blocks are drawn. So basically you get your red candles coming down. I like to go on the highest time frame to look for an isolated opposing color candle, which is your green candle. So I've isolated that one. I've isolated that one. Usually the open and the close of these candles. And then going forward, you will often see that these levels act as good support and resistance. So <clears throat> it is using these levels where I'm looking to find a bit of resistance basically. And if we go on the 15 minutes, the way it's look, in fact, let's go on the four hourly is probably better. So as you can see, we struggled here at six point, roughly 6.9K, uh, retesting it. And as I mentioned, it does look like we may just, because it's only coming down in a corrective fashion here when we looked on the 15 minute, it looks like it might push up higher. I do think there's a potential to get up to 7.7K where we get another bit of uh, resistance with the order block. So that, these are the levels that I'm looking at for potential shorts. Um, I'm looking at, I'm closely monitoring 7.7K. I think that's a very interesting level. Another key thing to look at is the previous uh, high to low and do a fib retracement of that. So let's take off magnet mode and just look at that fib retracement. So currently, so this is on the logarithmic scale and I do prefer the linear scale with fib retracements, but I do consider both on the log scale. We've tagged the one point, uh, sorry, the 0 0.618. Um, there's no real fib at 7.7 K, but if, if we go on the linear scale at 7.9, you've got your 0.618. So if we do come up, I'll be probably looking around here, 7.7 .7 through to 7.9 K for, for it then to roll over. I think it's going to struggle to get much higher than that. I really do. It really is testing overhead resistance. And if you look at the price action, for me, this does not look impulsive. Yeah, You would want to, optimistically, you would call that a, a one, two. And if that's your three, then already your fours overlap your one. Your best hope is that this is some kind of leading diagonal. Yeah, some one, two, three, four, five. And then it's going to come down in a two and then go up in a three. I don't see it. I would never bet on a leading diagonal. Um, to me it looks more corrective it makes more sense that it's corrective and for me this market's coming down um, next thing to look at I just want to pull up I mentioned the, the moving averages let's get back on the log scale so yeah 7700 is explained by these blocks so let's just take those off a moment let's bring back not that pitchfork but this one you can see already we're following the lines of this pitchfork. So yeah, we came down to the 0 0.5 line here, seeing a little bit of a bounce. And um, yeah, uh, the other thing to mention is obviously our 50 week simple moving average. And I mentioned, you know, as long as we're beneath that, it's very hard to take on a long position basically, um, because it's acted as a very good indicator of trend uh, in the past. So <clears throat> could we retest it before rolling over? It's possible, but as I say, I think it's gonna to struggle to get eat into this overhead resistance. So I'm not sure it is gonna come back and retest that. It may struggle to get past the, uh, the 100 week moving average even. Um, yeah, so yeah, as I say, we're well beneath the 50 week simple moving average. So certainly wouldn't be looking for any longs. It's looking weak, it's looking corrective in the manner that it's coming up. We're eating into overhead resistance. We're getting close to that 7.7K where the next order block level of resistance is. So that is kind of where I'm looking for um, a potential short shorting opportunity. Now, the other thing to look at is this big pitchfork. I basically, another way to short this is to wait for it to get beneath the median line, okay? That would be a huge show of weakness. We're getting beneath the median line, maybe then look for a retest before then shorting and then potentially targeting 1.3k but may have to take profits before then um, actually not necessarily I'd certainly be leaving a lot on the table with the short because yeah I think it could come down as I say 
this year, potentially around October time, I'm looking at it to come down to this level. Um, so yeah, I think that pretty much summarizes it. There was that other pitchfork just to mention. Uh, let's just bring that up. So taking, that's the pitchfork. Okay, so it's a smaller pitchfork, just looking at this initial three wave move down. So you can see we tested the lower warning line. So it was quite hyper extended this move down. It came down pretty aggressively, tagged the lower warning line, and it was a bit oversold. On top of that, it was finding support off this level, which was a bit of a horizontal level of support, uh, where price, when it did break out of this, it did it in dramatic fashion. So uh yeah but it's always going to act as a significant level of support especially when it comes down and hits it in an oversold fashion um so yeah this bounce although it has bounced a fair amount uh, you know i think it's what was it uh 0.618 on the log scale and around 50 percent on the linear scale it is a big bounce but you can expect that this is a, a corrective move it's gonna be a slow move to begin with coming down and this was came down very quickly so it is going to bounce quite a bit uh, again potentially you could monitor the, the median line of this pitchfork for a bit of resistance also that's another thing that i'll be closely monitoring so really 7.7k is the main thing that i'm looking out for uh, but if that level doesn't get tagged um, perfectly the main thing i'm looking out for is on the major pitchfork which is uh, this one i'm waiting for us to get beneath the median line then I'd put a position on with a stop probably above these lows here. So probably above 6.5K, something like that. So yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. Certainly bearish on Bitcoin right now. I'm not someone who's just gonna pump Bitcoin no matter what. I'm not one of these guys who says that I'm accumulating crypto throughout 2020 and forever and ever and every downward move is another chance to accumulate that's certainly not how i trade i'm a trader i'm not an investor and um yeah i think there's a lot more money to be made in trading so yeah for me waiting for prices to come down then i might start thinking about accumulation but not until um yeah so last but not least yeah obviously the the course not the course but cryptology is i'm doing a 50 percent discount and the link will be in the description to this video it will the offer will expire in three days time so if you want to check that out then do check it out as i say you've got three days and yeah i think we'll wrap it up but as always any queries pop them down in the comments and i'll try and get back to you and if you found value in today's content please leave a big thumbs up all right guys gonna wrap it up take care